hey look I'm in uh, Decula Georgia in Little Mulberry Park and I found a nice seat for me to sit down on but because I'm recording on this iPhone I realized I had to come up to the phone hit record and then go sit down <laughs> here we go um, so there we go <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about um, fitness and its role in dating so one thing I'm doing right now is this uh, challenge called 75 hard and it is basically for 75 days straight. Y'all, y'all see how I'm five seven and my feet barely touch the ground here. Uh, so for 75 days straight, you do two workouts. Um, you drink a gallon of water. Um, one of the workouts has to be outside. It's got to be uh, the both workouts have to be for 45 minutes. Um, one of them has to be outside. And the idea is that you know over the course of 75 days, you know if you have to work out outside every day. Probably one of those times is going to be in the rain and you're going to be forced to go out and do something you really don't want to do. Um, so two workouts, uh, indoor, outdoor, um, gallon of water a day. You have to adopt a diet, so um, no cheat meals for 75 days. Um, you adopt a diet, doesn't matter which diet it is, um, it, you know, it could be anything. And I've sort of created my own, which is, you know, drink only water with meals, um, no fried foods, no greasy foods, um, no bread. Um, what else? What else? Um, no desserts, no, nothing with like a ton of sugar, right? So all the stuff we know we probably shouldn't have on the regular, um, none of that. Okay. So over the last month, so I missed, so anytime you miss anything, right? Well, you also have to do a selfie, right? So you have, you track your progress each day. So, uh, and read 10 pages of a personal development book. Okay. So all that every single day, if you miss any element of that, then you start back over and you know you keep going for the 75 days and you don't quit um, so I'm on attempt like five or six or something like that right now I'm on day eight um, which is as far as I've ever made it in any of the other attempts because you know either I missed like a like a little bit of water out of my jug when I thought I drank it or I forgot to read someday or maybe I forgot a selfie or whatever um, also you know I slipped up on the diet uh, once or twice um, so now I'm on day eight and um, the last time I started over you know, I had people message me and they said, well, you know, it, I think it's really cool that you're, you know, holding yourself strictly accountable. Um, but now that you've started over so many times, like, just don't fucking quit or just don't mess up again, you know, because people are watching you. So, um, so it, that was really cool to hear because, you know, it just helps you want to get through it. But anyway, so I'm doing the 75 hard challenge and you know, it's about what you would do. This challenge is about the kind of the same kind of things that you would do if you decided to get in shape and do it for real, right? You're going to start, you know, running. So that's what that's my outside workout. You're going to start lifting weights, you know, because you want to be shapely, and uh, you're going to drink more water because it flushes out all the toxins and it helps you retain less water. Um, what else? Um, you're gonna, you know, you ought to be reading, right? You should. Uh, you know, increase the quality of what's going on up here and have new ideas and, and exercise those ideas out in the world. And of course, you want to track your progress. So all these elements of, you know, 75 hard are about what you would do anyway when you decide that you want to get in, in shape. And uh, so over the last month, so I said that I've had to start over several times. I'm on day eight, but I've been doing this for about a month now. I've lost 10 pounds, um, probably a little bit more than that as of today. So that's even, you know, everybody says, you know, if you're, if you're really working on stuff, you're going to lose about two pounds a week. And, um, and so that, that's even more than that, right? And this is great because I'm trying to get down to a lower weight class uh, for jiu-jitsu competition coming up this uh, fall uh, or the summer. And um, it's going to put me in the right weight class for a guy that's like 5'7", okay? And with my, you know, muscle mass or whatever. So, so I'm a midget. <laughs> so... Um, so anyway, so that's, that's the challenge thing. But the reason why I'm talking about this is because, you know, uh, fitness, nutrition, style, grooming, all this stuff plays a role in, in the dating and uh, relationships world. And I just want to talk about its relevance. So, so I'm doing this, you know, because I want to look the part. I want to have, you know, a proper amount of influence for people that watch my videos and that actually want to better their lives with when it, when it comes to dating and, and uh, relationships. And so I want to look the part, so I've been doing this challenge. Um, but more so than that is, you know, how you present yourself to the girl, okay? So 
so what Corey Wayne says, which is a, a relationships coach that I follow, and uh, you can find stuff on YouTube. What he says is, you know, kind, you know, success with women in terms of physical attraction is like a yes or no kind of a thing, right? Um, we, and we all kind of know that. But he says that, you know, if you take the 1 to 10 rating scale that we all use, right, we all use in a shallow way, um, that, you know, you need to at least be like a five in the girl's eyes to just get your foot in the door, right? And then from there, you have to demonstrate that you're actually a quality person. Um, but if you're like at least a five, then you can kind of get your foot in the door and demonstrate that you could be that guy for her. Um, and so uh, girls are going to kind of look you up and down. So you're out in public, right? So I was out in public today. Uh, I just went to Target and um, passed a really good looking girl on the way in. And I have a, you know, a habit, a discipline of making eye contact with women. Anytime I find them attractive, I'm going to see, you know, I, I don't want to be in my own la la land. I don't want to um, kind of miss out on that opportunity to assess what's going on at the very least, even if I don't want to stop and talk to them. Um, and so I have a discipline of making eye contact and, um, you know, with this particular girl, um, she was looking at me the whole time, but then there was no smile and, and no really like hesitation in where she was going, you know, as we walk past each other. So she's going to her car, I'm going in tar into Target and because there's no smile, it doesn't, didn't really prompt me to, you know, stop and try to talk to her or anything like that. So, uh, but it's funny though, so as you're out in public, you can kind of get an idea for who's interested and who's not by the facial expressions, the eye contact, and all, and all this kind of thing. Um, and that's, you know, that's going to go back to the little number system, right? So are you at least a five? And, you know, if you think about it, that's pretty damn generous, right? Because us as guys, like, I don't know, at least in my case, you're not going to get a chance if you're not at least a seven, right? So I think that's pretty generous. I think women that... Um, you know, they're going to give you a, a better chance to demonstrate that you're a quality person uh, to them than, say, a guy would to a girl. And, um, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, um, you know, it sounds a little bit shallow, but it kind of it just is what it is, right? And so if you're not into, you know, some level of fitness, if you're not employing uh, nutrition in your life or uh, some base level of style or grooming and all this kind of stuff, um, then you're probably going to end up a few notches down on the scale than where you would really be in, in her eyes, say, if you had some level of uh, maintenance in those areas. And where guys get fucked up is, you know, they think that it's all about looks, right? So then they go to the gym and they get jacked and they, you know, they blow themselves up and then like they're the most ripped, you know, bad motherfucker in the club. But then they just fold their arms and stand there in the corner and then they think girls are going to come to them. Why girls might be attracted to them physically, like as soon as they open their mouth, they're like, fuck this, you know. And so um, guys kind of get it wrong. And one of my friends, you know, it's funny. She was just telling me the story the other day where there's a guy that she showed me a picture of. And, of course, this guy is, is totally fucking jacked, like way stronger than me. Um, he's got the washboard abs and all this stuff. And um, he's afraid to meet her out in public. They met on an app. Um, they talk back and forth every once in a while, but he's, he's too scared to meet her. This is a guy that took his insecurities and he did a good thing by going to the gym to make himself, you know, to, to build himself up in a way, but he's missed, he, it's short-sighted. He's putting all his eggs in one little basket when really there's a lot of baskets that you have to maintain to be an attractive person. And so, you know, guys can get it wrong. We, we tend to think it's all about looks because we weigh looks so heavily when it comes to the opposite sex. And uh, we kind of think it works the opposite way and it doesn't. Now, yeah, like girls like Jason Momoa, right? Like that's not going to change. Girls like Channing Tatum, you know, and that's not going to change. And, uh, you know, luckily, uh, probably neither one of them live in your hometown. And so you should probably be okay. <laughs> but, um, you know... Yeah, you can compete with the best looking guys. You know, some guys really have that blessing where, you know, maybe they have the full beard or they're tall or they're tan or whatever. And uh, yeah, you know, it's going to be intimidating to compete with something like that. Um, you know, it's not something that's necessary. And, um, and that's just because a lot of these guys that have that sort of natural advantage in terms of uh, looks, they never seek to develop themselves to that level where they're getting consistent success with women in terms of, 
being able to maintain a relationship or being like a, a quality person that can just come up and uh, start a conversation on the fly. Um, they, they just kind of um, rest on their laurels. And so it's kind of a blessing. It's a little bit of a curse too, right? But to be a guy that's maybe not a 10, like maybe me, like maybe I'm a seven or something. I don't, I don't know what the fuck I am, but it's not a 10. <laughs> and uh, looks wise anyway. And uh, it's kind of a blessing to, to be in those shoes because you get forced to, you know, get out there and weather yourself to rejection, weather yourself to the social environment, um, build yourself up as a guy who can uh, express himself and, and carry on a conversation with a girl and show that you're a high quality guy. And so, so don't get it twisted. You know, you want to have uh, some understanding of, of style. You want to have um, some nutrition in your life and, and cut out the, the shit, you know, and you want to lift weights and you want to run and, and do all this stuff, drink a lot of water. Um, but don't get obsessed with it because it's not the end all be all, you know. Girls say they want the same things over and over and over again. And when you talk to them, um, they want some, a guy that's confident. They want a guy that can make them laugh. Um, they want uh, somebody that's on their path in life that's not going to make them the center of attention. They want um, somebody that can be self-deprecating, right? So you don't want to be uh, egotistic. And uh, of course, there's a lot more to it. But when you can have those qualities and be somewhat presentable as a fucking guy, you're going to have a lot better chance than the asshole uh, 10 that just folds his arms in the corner of the club. And so that's that. I just want to add one other thing. So as I've been doing um, this 75 hard challenge and I've been um, you know, losing weight, so I'm, I'm down about 10 pounds. I'm going to go about 16 more, I think. Um, as I've been doing this, you can, f you know, I don't know. So your day-to-day -day normal is your normal. And so if you're out of shape right now, your normal might be, you know, being tired, being sluggish, um, having less energy, um, you know, uh, maybe having slower mental processing time or not being able to express yourself as joyfully because maybe you have sort of a low level depression um, due to like gut health and, um, and or just chemical imbalance, you know, and and these are things that are going to seem normal to you if you're out of shape. And so you, you want to kind of have the hope that once you get more and more in shape, so I'm only in a month into this and I've dropped 10 pounds, which has made a huge difference for me in terms of the way I feel, and I have more to go. Um, but when you're out of shape, you're not gonna feel that. So you need to kind of have the hope that once you get closer to these goals that you're setting for yourself, that you're gonna feel better. And um, the feeling that you get being in proper health is really unmatched. And it, it's a different world than where you're at now. Um, emotionally and um, yeah, really just like emotionally. And, and so, you know, as somebody who grew up with depression and I sort of conquered this mostly for myself um, and that's a whole other video because I, I really believe that you can cure depression um, not through medication and uh, that's a whole other subject. But as somebody that grew up with that and I was um, in and out of depressional facilities like in first grade and I went back again in eighth grade and I struggled with that and uh, had a poor social life growing up. Um, you know, somebody who conquered that as an adult, um, there's still remnants. You never fully get rid of all the demons, right? And, and so when you're out of shape, those demons are like sitting on your shoulders. But when you get in shape and when you're eat, especially when you're eating the right stuff and drink a lot of water, um, they're, you know, shut away in the closet. And I think that that's a whole nother level to this, that more so than just being able to uh, communicate freely with women, uh, more so than just, you know, feeling more attractive. It's like just being a happier person in your day-to-day -day life just because you're in good health. And so if there's anything else I could say, I would say that, um, you know, do it for that reason, if nothing else. And um, I think that's about it. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk about that today. And um, I hope you all have a great week. See you later.